Assalamu alaikum, welcome to another session. Today we are going to talk about how actually we take analog signal in a PLC and then how we process it and what are the phases through which the analog signal actually come in towards the PLC. By analog signal we mean level, temperature, pressure, current, voltages. These kind of a signals are everywhere when you talk about oil and gas, petrochemical, power plant, fertilizer industry, cement industry. You have to kind of deal with that signals because if you don't know how to process that signals then it's going to be very difficult for you to be an automation engineer, to be a control system, PLC, SCADA engineer because these concepts are going to be very vital for you. So if you want to learn that all you have to do is just stay connected for a while. I will try to make it as easy as eating delicious food like you just have to stay connected and we will explain it so today's topic is analog signal processing in a PLC and just take a scenario forget about everything you have given a task imagine you have all tank and your boss says you have to automate that all tank first step you what you will do you're gonna put some instrument there to kind of measure that level then you can control it for sure like if you have a value of that or how much is the level inside then you can you can definitely control that and another thing you will ask your boss are your like if you're going to uh, any company and they're asking you to come you know kind of automate that you will ask okay tell me how much is the level range here so we got an answer the level range is 0 to 300 liters you can say here is written units and unit can be any any unit but here let's consider it's 0 to 300 units and to measure that we put an instrument right so we got a transmitter here that's gonna measure the value how much is the value inside it uh, like how much is the level inside the tank we got a level transmitter there to do that job. Then we have a I card. We need to have, uh, like for example, if we have a digital signal, we need to have a DI card, digital input card. And we have, if we have analog input, uh, you can say analog signal coming from the field. Then we need to have a I module. And after that, definitely CPU. So that's how signal process from uh, oil tank to CPU of the PLC. Now. If we have a signal between 0 to 300, it doesn't mean that 0 to 300 is a physical quantity, right? Sensor will sense that, but it is not going to be processed through transmitter. Like, output of the transmitter will not be the same. It is going to be 4 to 20 milliampere. We, it can be either 0 to 10 volt or it can be 4 to 20 milliampere, but it cannot be 0 to 300 because 0 to 300 is a physical quantity and we have set standards. Like when we are processing the signal from the transmitter to the PLC, then we will send it in 4 to 20 milliamperes. And that guy, when PLC will read it, it will not read like you can say 0 to 300 there. It is going to be reading a raw value again 0 to 27648. So in standard, PLC take the data in 16 bit of resolution. How much? 16 bit of the resolution. And but we are getting here 0 to 27648. And if in the case we talk about uh, that value, that why it's 0 to 27648, and how it comes, we will explain that in you know like later part of the slides. But for now you understand that PLC will read the value 0227648. Okay, so if in the case we have a zero units come in from the process itself, like we have a zero liters of the all, uh, level, then it is going to read four, it is going to like transmitter will send that four milliampere signal and PLC will read zero. And then we, if we have a 300, like we our all tank is filled with oil then at that time it is going to send the maximal signal here that is 20 milliampere and the maximum value the PLC we, we have already discussed that's 27648 so that is going to be the value for PLC value like you can say the raw value the PLC is getting is going to be 
27648. Again, I'm saying this 27648, how it's coming, I'm going to explain it. So stay connected. So, so far, what we discuss here, uh, for 4 milliampere, we are getting 0. And for 20 milliampere, we are getting 27648, right? Let's take another scenario here. We, where we have, instead of 4 to 20 milliampere, if we have 0 to 10 volt, right? So in that case, if we have 0 to 10 volt, then in the case if we have nothing in their tank, then we, we will have a 0 volt sending there towards the you know, PLC. If in the case we have, uh, you can say, 5 volt air. So 5 volt is like if, if you talk about 0 to 10 range, so a 10, if you, you will half it, that, that value will be 5 volt, right? If you will divide by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5 volt, of course, here. Yeah. So if you talk about, at that time, uh, we have a maximum value. The maximum value range is 27648. And here, what we will do, because it's a half of the, you know, like 300, and half of 300 is 150, and half of the 0 to 10 volt, if in the case you will cut 10 by 2, then it will be 5 volt, right? And here in the raw value, we have a value 27648, the maximum value. If we will divide it by 2, that's going to be 13824. So that's how the signal is processing in a PLC. So if in the case we have a 10 volt, it is going to be the maximum value, 27648. So hope so you understand that, how we are processing that signal in a PLC and how it's taking it. So, so far we understand for 0 volt, we uh, like we get 0 in value in a PLC and for 5 volt we get 1, 3, 8, 2, 4 and for 10 volt we get 2, 7, 6, 4, 8 2 raised to the power 15 and that is going to be how much? that is going to be 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 3, 2, 7, 6, 8 it's not the value that we were getting there you remember we were getting 2, 7, 6, 4, 8 right? like that value but why we are getting, uh, you know, like if in the case we get that value 0 to 2764, that is, you can say 85% of it, a whole value. 85% of 32768, uh, 3, 2, 7, 6, if we get 85% of that, then we are getting that value, right? So that's something that we have to clearly understand why we are getting that value. Answer for that. Why 27648? Remember, 0 to, if you talk about 4 to 20 milliampere, if the value of the current is less than 4, then it will be, you can say, under range, right? You can say under flow. So to detect the value, we need to have some certain values in there. So we, we Siemens is, did one thing that for under flow and under range, they have reserved some space of the total value. You can see here for under range and for overflow like if in the case your value goes exceeded then uh, 20 milliampere to sense that so they have uh, you know like keep some values uh, you know for that reason also so for overflow and underflow you can say we, we reserve some 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 values from whole range in there so then we have a written range between 4 to 20 milliampere and for that range we are taking values between 0 to 27648 is that clear so to understand that for example if there is a cut in the wire how you will understand that if there is a cut in the wire for sure you will understand it in the way like if the case if in the case you will get the value like that is uh, not coming in the rated range right so then you will understand okay based on that you will analyze and if in the case your value is exceeding like you have a short circuit the current is flowing too much more than 20 milliampere that is going to be overflow and to detect that or to sense that we, Siemens have uh, reserved some spaces in there so that's the reason we are taking only 85 percent of the total value for 0 volt we were getting 0 value in the PLC for 5 volt we were getting 13824 and for 10 volt we were getting 27648 but this is not the what value we were looking for right we were looking for actual level that is between 0 to 300 this raw value is not making any sense now what we have to do right for in this case if in the case we are not getting exactly the same value but 
p instead we are getting a raw value what we can do here here we have to perform the scaling concept so what is scaling you might be thinking about that taking a raw value in 0 to 27648 and then passing it through the scaling function and I will explain it in next session what is the scaling function how we can use that in Siemens PLC S7300 for now you just understand it's a magic block a magic box in there like raw values process in there and through a raw value we are gonna get engineering value so the process of taking a raw value as an input and converting converting it into the engineering value is actually called a scaling you understand that so that's how we perform scaling in next session we are gonna talk about how we actually get the data in Siemens PLC how we will program it actually that's gonna be a part of next session if you are enjoying the series on PLC training from ITN Automation Academy you just have to kinda subscribe this channel and because it's an opportunity for everybody right so you should have to share that with your friends so that they can get in a benefit out of this training series that's going on from PLC uh, you can say we are up to now 17 lecture I think so at 17 lecture uh, like you can share this opportunity to your friends it's not gonna stop here we have to talk a lot in next up, up, next uh, upcoming sessions if you are confused in any topic up to now what we cover so far you can write a comment here in section down below because this is right for that reason if you will ask your comments here if you write a comment like you're confused what exactly you are confused in some topic are you not in signing something here write in the comments I will get back to you through the live session that is gonna be something that is gonna be a possible way I will take on every comment here and I will try to answer your questions so that's it and thank you very much for watching this video take care and take care for the loved ones and don't forget to subscribe this channel because it's just started a lot of things are coming up so stay connected salam alaikum